Cedric Maxwell is with us. So is Phil Perry. Max, you've been in these situations before. The Celtics are saying all of the right things, but at times they've come up short this year or looked uninspired. Do you think they can dig deep, pull it out, and win tomorrow night? Come on, Phil. Give me that look on your face, man. Come on. I need a smile over there. I, you know what? They, they, this is what we've learned about this team this year. It's the fact that as soon as we count them out, then they play, they play better. I mean, did we think that they were going to go to Milwaukee and beat Milwaukee or Milwaukee for the sixth game? Did we think that they lose a the game against Miami and go down, go down to Miami? I think this is a very confident group. I think they know what they have to do. Do they have enough to do it? I think they do. What they're going to have to do is find some scoring off the bench. You can't score three points in the NBA game off your bench compared to the other teams, 16 or 17 or 18, and expect to win. But the biggest thing is turn the basketball over. The Celtics, when they don't turn the ball over, they win their share of games. They had 18 turnovers. 22 points were given up, Trini, won turnovers. And that is unacceptable to win a basketball game. I played in a game one time. I think it was Philadelphia, 1981. Everybody, oh, so what? Well, it was Philadelphia, 76ers down, 3-1. And we came back to win that series, win the first team to do it. A confident bunch of guys. And this is, I think, what you have, the resolve of this Celtic team. Max, first of all, I never say so what when you want to bring up the 1980s Celtics. Second of all, I am joining you on your party of optimism right now. I'm right there with you. I think that the Celtics are up to the task, quite frankly, because I just don't think they're this bad. They're turning the ball over 16% of the time, according to ESPN, which, if extrapolated over the course of this year's regular season, would have been the worst in the league. I think the Warriors' defense is pretty good. They're not that good, and the Celtics aren't that bad. They're not that careless with the basketball. At least they shouldn't be consistently, so I think they're going to find their level offensively, Trenny. Not everyone is going to go cold, and this has been an incredibly resilient team. Not consistent, but resilient, and that's why I think they're winning game six. Well, Max, you mentioned the bench needing to step up. Someone else that people would like to see perform at a higher level is Jason Tatum. The Celtics will need him to be at his best tomorrow night. A lot of people are doubting him right now, and he even picked up a very unfortunate nickname, courtesy of Jim Murray on Felger and Maz. Tuka Tatum, oh. very talented, a lot of big stats, mm. wishy-washy personality, craps pants when needest, needed most. <laughs> Tuka Tatum, that's what he's been in this series. Tuka Tatum. Okay, I am, I'm just going to jump in first here. I was hard on Tuka Rask, absolutely, but not right away. You cannot tell me, Cedric Maxwell, that Jason Tatum, who hasn't even had a chance to go out there and maybe will his team back to a Game 6 win and maybe an NBA Finals win, you can't go compare him to Tuka Rask, who multiple times in major moments failed to show up, like, like, like a lot of times over 10 years. He's still 24. He's still learning. It hasn't been that bad with Jason Tatum. <clears throat> Big Jim Murray, pick something else. That that wouldn't be – call him Paul Bunyan, whatever you want to call him. But this is not one of those things. And then he says his personality is up and down. This kid right now, I think you see consistent growth. I think you've seen him as a uh, – when you interview him, he's much better. He understands who he is. But just believe that the biggest thing about this team and about Jason Tatum, one thing, he cannot turn the ball over anymore. He's already broken an NBA record right now with the most turnovers in a in a four game, a five game series so far, six game series really. And so you think about who he has to be. He has to be that guy who's consistent, who's everybody, you know, just dubbed the, the next coming. Hey, it has to happen now. Yeah, I, I just think that's way too strong. I love Big Jim, and I, and I like trying to draw the cross-sport parallels. I do. I enjoy that part of it. But this isn't the one. This isn't it. I think in terms of what Max is getting at, in terms of their attitude, I'm not sure that comp is entirely fair. What I think a lot of people were frustrated by with Tuka Rask was that after games, after losses, it you know, would be sort of a shrug of the shoulders, and you couldn't tell if he really even wanted to be there or not. I think this stuff bothers Tatum. He said the other night, we don't do this bleep on purpose, okay? So he does care. He is very young, Trenny, to your point as well. And so the ceiling is uncapped, in my opinion, whereas we knew who Tuka was after a few Jim years. Jim Murray, I know we make our living on hot takes, you got, you but know, that listen. one is stinky. All right, special edition of the Deep Dive today. We are calling it Deep Dive Fear Factor.
Doctor. Maybe you remember the show. It was a hit back in the day. We're still here with Max. We also have Chris Forsberg, fresh off another trip to San Francisco. Forsberg. And ready for another one. Okay, okay you're ready for another one. The question is, mm -hmm. and I'm not just going to put this on Jason Tatum, but I'm also going to put it on Jalen Brown because they're co-stars, mm -hmm. especially in these NBA finals. Are they going to come out like dogs tomorrow night? Or are they going to be like, oh, oh, little puppies? So my fear factor, are we explaining the scale? Like zero is like not worried about it. Se like 10 is really yeah. worried about sure, it. Sure, is well, that how they did on the fear factor? Sure. I'm, I'm a little bit like seven. Like I, oh. I think Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are going to have big games, but I also thought they were going to have big games in game five, and that didn't happen. So I can't unequivocally say that they're going to go out there and they're going to dominate this game because the Celtics are so damn unpredictable, and I've totally lost my grasp on like what's going to happen on a night-to-night -night basis. Grant Williams could go out there and score 50 points tomorrow, and I would just wake up and be like, yep, that's just happened because that's what the Celtics do, and it's going to be crazy, and it's going to be wild. So I don't know if they're going to play like dogs, but I do think the Celtics win this game, so I hope they at least park a little bit, pack a little bit of their bark. Dogs or puppies? They come out and they play like dogs, and they play like dogs because there's a desperation that they have to have now. Uh, you know, when you corner a dog in the corner or you try to take that bowl of food away from him, Trini, when he's eating, Man, you get that that angry growl. They have to have that that sense of urgency, and I think they will. I mean, this is a team that has bounced back every time we have thought that they were dead. They got up. They were like Dracula, man. This team really, I think, it's the same kind of cult movie. They're gonna get up and they're gonna rise again. Little reservoir dogs in there. Is mm -hmm. that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We let the dogs out. I mean, we're doing no Baja men today. Uh, oh, that's who it was. I was trying to think of who yeah. sang that song. I, um, that. I am a little worried about that just because neither has. So you were saying Jason Tatum, boo, Denny, boo, boo. Boo. Clay Thompson has earned the nickname Game Six Clay, which by the way is the worst nickname of all time. He averages <laughs> more points in Game Fives, but still, Clay has been very good in Game Sixes throughout his career, averaging nearly 21 points while shooting nearly 50% from three. Here is the Warrior sharpshooter on what he expects from himself tomorrow night. I would like to have a big night and win the game, but, you know, it doesn't matter what any of us do individually. The main goal is just to win one game. So I don't want to put any extra pressure on myself to live up to my name. I just want to go out there and play free, trust my teammates, and I know great things will happen if I do those two things. Max, my fear factor on this is actually pretty low because I think Clay Thompson isn't quite the guy that he was when he, you know, came back against Oklahoma City, who helped will the Golden State Warriors to that Western Conference Finals win over Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook. So my, my fear factor on this is actually low, but is that misguided? Has Clay Thompson shown you something that we should be fearful of what he may do tomorrow night? Um, his shot has not really been there for him. Here's a guy who can score with anybody in the league. But the Celtics have been pretty consistent right now with trying to slow him down. Uh, they've had a big body on him. The thing that Forsberg I don't like is you don't attack Clay in the paint. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's guarding Al Horford. Al, put an anchor on your behind, get in the paint, and destroy this guy because he's so much smaller. That's one of the things the Celtics have done. What they do, they send Al to the corner. And essentially, that takes away one of his strengths, really, to get in and pound in the inside. I want to see them do that with both Curry and Klay Thompson because you haven't made them work anywhere near enough in this series. You haven't made them feel you the way that Durant and Giannis and all these other Jimmy Butler felt you. And so whatever that's got to be, whether that's exploiting them on the defensive end or finding a way to just be like for physical, I do not think this is a, a game that Klay Thompson goes out there and, and is the difference in this game. He might get his points, but he's not nearly the player that he was, Trini, as you said. What's, what's like a... You know, I, I got the... Trini, I got to ask Forsberg this. What did you think when Draymond Green went down in the huddle of the Boston Celtics I, in, in, at, in that game? Man, what did you... Gonna, how did you feel with that basketball? This. I mean, yeah. I was, you're going to hate this. I loved it. I loved every second of it. Because we sat there when Grant Williams followed Kevin Durant into the huddle. And I was like, this is great. This is what Grant does. He antagonizes people. And he follows you. And he hounds you after the whistle. He's not even going to let you get a shot off. And I thought that was great. I can't sit here and be hypocritical and be like, oh, it's Jason Tatum. He got dirty. No, like, that's basketball. If the refs want to sit there and like say something about it, then do it. I will yeah, say this okay. guy. Not I, I get it. But I just wouldn't want to have anybody in the lane. I, I, I can't even imagine when I played during my time that another player would be in our huddle that late in a timeout. Yeah, I just no, can't even imagine how he would have walked out of there. So, it's just so crazy. shouldn't someone have put him on his ass? Like, isn't that the problem? Like, shouldn't someone have walked over and been like, yo, we don't do this, boom. 
then, like, you're going to lose that game anyway. I'm on somebody. You, you're preaching to the choir now. All right. We, we found unity. I will say this, guys. I'm not sure if you saw uh, today, but Jason Tatum, uh, they had some pictures of him walking around. He never let go of the basketball again today. I think that was a little nod at what <laughs> happened in Game 5. Well, Steph Curry coming off a brutal shooting performance in Game 5 where he was 0 for 9 from 3. The bad news for the season is Curry knows how to bounce back. He averages 4.4 three-pointers in the next game after not making a 3 Forsberg, this does worry me. My fear factor on this is high because Steph Curry does two things. He makes and drains three-point shots, mm -hmm. and he also um, is ice cold in big games. Phil, actually, we're going to start with you. How much? How worried are you? I'm sorry. my number. I, I, you Let Phil go. Let Phil go. Go, 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 go. The number's 10. It's 10 out of 10. You have to be petrified of Steph Curry. The only question is, because we're all, I'm sure, confident that Steph Curry's going to go off, what can you do against his teammates? What can you do to slow down Andrew Wiggins, to slow down Clay Thompson? I think he has sort of come on in the last couple of games here offensively. So you have to focus on him. And offensively, for you yourselves, Celtics, do you have anyone that can answer? And we're all looking at one guy. It's Jason Tatum. Can he have a game six from the Bucks series to match or try to keep pace with Steph Curry, who, again, there, there's no way he doesn't go off, right, Forsberg, after right. that game in game five. Nine. It's like, I, I'm not quite at a ten, but here's the thing. Even if he goes off, you've survived big Steph games in this series. The key is, just as you guys said, is like making sure no one else goes nuts, reeling Andrew Wiggins in a little bit, hoping that Clay doesn't have the big game. I fully expect that Steph is going to go out there. He's going to hit some crazy shots, and it's all going to be, can you weather it when it happens? and not get rattled the way they did too many times in this series. 11. Right back. He is just Mark. such a dynamic score. You know, you think about, look at some of these shots that he, he makes these kind of shots in the sleep. But the biggest thing about it, yeah, you can survive that, but the, thing, the guy who's killing you right now isn't that, it's Wiggins. Wiggins has been unbelievable in scoring the basketball. He has been the difference in this series. You knew all along that Steph Curry was going to score, but Wiggins is a guy who stepped up and made plays. But, yeah, I would have some fear right now when it came to Steph Curry and his ability to knock down shots, considering all the shots he missed in Golden State. Yeah, I'm double digits. I'm 10. All right, well, Jason Tatum working on his sore shoulder at practice today. You can see him kind of like self-massaging, kind of, you know, working it out there. He has played more minutes than anyone this postseason by a large margin, and he was asked about fatigue earlier today. It's game six, you know, it's um, elimination game. It's not really time to be, you know, finding time to rest. You know, I'm not the only person that's tired or dealing with injuries or whatever. You know, it's the last two teams standing. We've been playing six, seven months. Um, so everybody dealing with something. So we're all just laughing here about how Jason Tate is holding <laughs> on to that, that basketball so that he doesn't turn it over so much. All right, fear factor, though, Chris Forsberg, Ooh. that fatigue is going to be an issue because I do think... One! Has, okay. One! It's the friggin' final! Why else would he miss Jason? I'm going to focus on Jason Tatum here uh, specifically... Four air balls in the fourth quarter? That's not because you all of a sudden can't shoot the ball. You're tired. Yeah, but like, it's like it's when people are saying, oh, fatigue is a factor. Yeah, is it a factor in the first quarter when he launched the ball into the first row? Like, you can – I just can't get into this. It's the NBA Finals. It's the biggest moment of your life. If you're not amped up, if you're not finding some adrenaline in this moment, there is a problem. He has certainly played a ton of basketball, and the shoulder is a concern for me. I think we'll find out more about that after the season, and we can overreact at that point about just how much of, a, of an issue it was. But I just cannot – for the life of me, with 48 hours in advance, to game six in your home building in front of a raucous crowd and sit here and tell me that fatigue is going to be an issue. You know what? Don't dig yourself a 16-point hole. I think the fact that he is going to be, I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it a five because they have to give him some opportunities to rest. I think if you look at Steph Curry, the way the benches have been going, Steph Curry is able to come in fresh later on the game because Jordan Poole is able to come in and get a contribution. The Celtics have to find a way to give Tatum a little bit of breathing room so he doesn't go into the fourth quarter with his legs a little heavy. Uh, I understand your adrenaline is pumping. You, you're going to go crazy. You're going to play only two games. But again, he is still human. And sometimes you're going to get tired. Hopefully, they'll find a few more minutes. And I think all you need is a, a few minutes here and there to spot him, really to create a situation where he gets more rest. 
Yeah, if we're talking about fatigue and we're not necessarily specifying the type of fatigue, Forsberg, let's have a nuanced discussion here. Let's talk about <laughs> mental fatigue or emotional fatigue or psychological fatigue, whatever you want to call it. They went through an absolute meat grinder against Milwaukee and then again against the Miami football team. And so you're now here <laughs> with all this stress on you, especially for some of these younger players. And I think emotionally they have to be somewhat drained. I just can't explain like the lack of success from inside the three-point arc. They have not been going to the rim strong. I mean, how many dunks have we seen from the Celtics in this series, period? We're watching some of these highlights from earlier in this playoff run. Al Horford put back jams. It's like he's put in the, the juvenation machine, and we haven't seen that from him in days. How else do you explain it? I think there is some mental fatigue going on for the Celtics right now, and that would explain the turnovers in some part. It would explain the missed free throws, the air balls. I think a lot of this has to do with just the fact that they have been ground into a fine powder over the course of the last couple months. I'm going to say this, Phil, mental fatigue is a real thing, but you got to find a way to dig deep when that camera goes on. When mm -hmm. those lights go on, you cannot be having a meltdown. Uh, and one thing, uh, can I yell at our producers for putting all that Robert Williams injury B-roll in there? I feel like that was a personal <laughs> right. attack. Biggest fear, guys, turnovers. When the C's commit 16 or more, they are 1-7. and seven. Under 16, they are 13-2. and two. My fear factor, Cedric Maxwell here, is a 16. Yes, it nailed it. It is a 16 because I, it's, it's terrifying to me. And to me, the turnovers, Max, are an amalgamation of everything, right? Like, they're tired. They are, they don't have that dog, that killer instinct, and it all lets, everything falls apart, and then they get sloppy and lazy and make bad passes, and it leads to bad turnovers. So to me, all those other things lead to turnovers. I'm going to go 20, <laughs> and, and I, I totally agree with you because that has really been the key to the Boston Celtics playing this year, uh, especially in late in the season. when they and, and some of these turnovers, just mental turnovers, where you're throwing it to the other team, they're unforced. And that's the biggest thing that's hurt the Celtics. You think all of these passes right now that you see are being turned over are being turned over because they're in a rush. They don't have any place to go. There's no room. And it's giving the opposition opportunities to score. So that is my biggest fear in this game. The Celtics turn the basketball over and they just cannot do that. So much comes down to focus, and it drives me nuts when this team just goes to the basket without a plan. And of those 16 turnovers the other night, I went back, or 18 turnovers the other night, I went back and watched it, and there was at least seven off drives where they just, I mean, they just had no idea where, where they were going with the basketball, no plan. Marcus Smart does a 360 and launches one to the moon. So they need to be better in that instance, and they better be. It comes down to focus.